Good readings, Craddock here. We're going to be taking a look at the Wizard Spike Ethereal based Firebird's Mirror Image Solo Push build. So a lot of this build is going to be very similar to the other Firebird's Mirror Image based push builds, especially the Oculus. However, it plays completely differently and it's such a joy to play because of this special affix that comes on the Wizard Spike. So consecutive hits to enemies increase damage by 10% up to 100%. As you can imagine, this is going to vary your gameplay. Uh, the targets that you are stacking this debuff on are going to take more damage. However, as compared to an Oculus, if you just jump on a target, you're going to be starting out with less damage. So it requires some finesse and definitely requires a few minor changes as well in the build, including the Tasker and Theo. So this is really good, what's going to allow your pets to get the jump on enemy targets before they basically get annihilated in those higher grade rifts. Even with the Enforcer, uh, they're going to be taking a lot of damage. So the Tasker in theory really helps them get those first attacks out, kind of just hit the enemies to keep them at bay, and then also allows them to attack faster uh, to get more hits within COE, uh, quicker rotations for killing off targets that you have stacked up this wizard spike bonus on. It's quite nice, in fact. And with the higher attack speed base of the wizard spike, you can notice here your attacks per second are all the way up to 1.9 attacks per second, which is going to put us squarely in the 10 frame breakpoint without any issues whatsoever. You can actually run uh, even a 12% wizard spike should be able to still maintain the 10 frame breakpoint. Uh, this is going to mean increased recovery from life per hit, so we're placing two life per hit affixes on gear. You can really cast your manual flame blades a lot more freely and get more stacks of elemental damage from the flame blades bonus. If you are in high density, uh, this is one of those things that is going to help you burn them down a lot quicker uh, because you will have this um, maybe 10 or 20 stacks of the extra elemental damage up at all times during your fire convention cycle. So how this consecutive hits to enemies uh, seems to work, at least how it felt to me when I was pushing, is that it is stacking uh, to either single or single digit on close by enemies that you are hitting primarily with your beam, your disintegrate. So you can sort of uh, control uh, where this bonus is being applied is similar to how Stricken stacks up. You can stack up this bonus a little bit more easier on primary targets that you are right next to and channeling your Disintegrate on. And with the increased attack speed, it's a lot easier to uh, stack or restack this bonus if you happen to go out of range, transition, rift levels, whatever. So is that it helps you spawn Oculus Rings a lot easier because it helps you kill off those little adds all the much more quicker. It just has a natural flow to the build that feels really good. It's gonna come standard with the damage to all wizard skills affix like the other builds. This is just a multiplier to sheet damage pretty much. And it also comes with cooldown, arcane power regeneration, always nice. Uh, maximum arcane power, not really gonna help this build all that much. But in general, it's just a really nice weapon to have as a target ethereal because it's easier to acquire than the Oculus will be in season. So compared to the Oculus, uh, the Oculus rolls a 75 to 100 percent damage percent affix range. The Wizard Spike does not have that, so it'll be a lot easier to get a Wizard Spike with the correct legendary and uh, passive on it. What are we losing if we're not running the Oculus. You're, you're losing that extra uh, main stat, so you do have to make up for that a little bit because you don't have a vitality affix. Uh, we're also missing the elite damage, so you still have the all guild set here for 30% elite damage, however you do not have the 15% that you would have from an Oculus. An Oculus as well has a higher base um, damage that it's going to deal. So. Uh, the Wizard Spike is playing from a lower base d damage, so basically what this means is that you're relying on the consecutive hits to enemies affix to make up and then exceed at these higher rifts 
the DPS output on specific targets. That's really what's going to make it shine. So an Oculus uh, based build, if you were to say jump on a target, uh, you should have an easier time just dealing damage to AOE. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have applied this debuff to take advantage of uh, what the weapon offers. Whereas the wizard spike, you may have to stack a few times to sort of equalize that DPS threshold, but after say two to two to three stacks, you're gonna to start to exceed the damage output that the Oculus Ethereum would afford you. So this is the benefit and power of the wizard spike. Uh, this particular version, let's just go over all the basics. We have multipliers, endless walk, uh, Bane of the Trapped is multiplier. It's going to be a close range build, so we're using Audacity. We do have elemental exposure because it is an ethereal based weapon, though. We only have three stacks from the Arcane uh, Disintegrate. Frost Nova gives us the cold, and then the fire comes from our Explosive Blast. Uh, and those are multiplicative debuff stacks, so keep that in mind. So it's going to be around 16% multiplier there. We are running additive damage via Unwavering Will and the Taegook, so this stacks up, and when you stand still, you get the extra additive from Unwavering Will. We also have Bone Chill in the build, so Frost Nova Bone Chill. The 33% debuff really helps out in those scenarios where your Taegook drops for whatever reason. It also is just a little bit more advantageous than, say, the Deep Freeze Rune, uh, especially against the Rift Guardian, who does take quite a while uh, at those higher pushing scenarios because we are running a strickenless build. Something to note though is that those single target Rift Guardians, especially with the Wizard Spike, we're stacking up a, de a, a multiplicative debuff on them. It's a lot easier with this build to kill Rift Guardians as compared to even an Oculus build. There we have the Death Wish of course multiplier and then the Orb of Infinite Depth, 40% as we hit enemies with our EB. Now, toughness-wise, we have the four-piece Firebirds, 80% there. We have 80% from, again, our Orb of Infinite Depth. Toughness also coming from Safe Passage, so as we teleport, we're as we move around, we're going to get toughness there. As we stand still, we're going to get the toughness from Unwavering Will. So typically, what you'll do is you'll try and find a spot that is going to be good for a DPS cycle, teleport there, and then stand still to take advantage of both of these defensive bonuses, giving the armor and all resistance for UW, of course. It's going to be quite nice. Now, I've chosen to run the Blur passive. Uh, you can run Conflagration as an alternate option uh, instead of there to go even more uh, of an offense, giving that extra crit debuff. However, I felt, uh, given that we do not have the Mantle of Channeling in the build, that Blur was the better option in this scenario. Uh, now, like I mentioned, we have the elite damage reduction from the Oculus. We also have the uh, RCR from the Captain Crimson's is going to give us a lot of toughness as well. Cooldown is going to be allocated pretty much <laughs> almost everywhere that you can place it aside from the rings, the offhand, and the neck. Uh, those are going to be reserved for either elemental damage on the neck, the offhand, we, because the uh, Wizard Spike does not come with Arcane Power Crit like the Oculus Ethereal, we drop the cooldown that you might have had on this item and place Arcane Power on Crit on the source instead. Now, one of the cool things is with the lower base, uh, you can take advantage of average damage, especially on Ancient Rings. It's going to be really nice for those higher Paragons. Uh, keeping in mind that um, lower paragons will place the recovery on the ring instead, on one of your two rings, just because it's more efficient to do that and maintain toughness at these lower paragons. So you would keep the int on your glove and the uh, vitality on your headpiece in that scenario. However, uh, at these higher paragons, it becomes more and more advantageous to start trading off a little of your main stat. Life per hit affixes, as aforementioned, on the bracer and either on the helmet or on quad gloves. So you can also do this either way, whichever item you are more fortunate to get. Note here, I've substituted vitality for the 
helm variation into int paragon and vice versa i've taken it out of vitality paragon and placed it more into main stat for the quad glove notice we are running the templar so we do not have the cooldown from the enchantress or the attack speed nor do we need those two things which is pretty nice lower paragons you are going to run the templar with the cannot die token just to make sure that he stays alive, follower cannot die. And then you place cooldown affixes on the Templar as much as possible to reduce the Templar's heal. Uh, it will, cooldown on the follower will only reduce the heal spell. It will not reduce the second life passive. However, we are able to benefit from a second life passage, a little bit of extra CC perhaps, and LP uh, life per second as well. But the heal is the most important thing, you know, below 15 seconds. And then if you are able to gear later in season, you can spec out the Templar to run with the reduces cooldown of all follower skills token instead, placing the Esoteric and the Mutilation Guard, leveled up of course, with highly defensive items, you know, affixes include light percentage, all resistance, vitality, and then perhaps even augment on the follower as well to get even more toughness. Quite nice to be able to get a really quick sub six second heal from your Templar. You usually don't want to engage more than one elite at a time just because we have to stack up this debuff from the wizard spike on enemies and you'll see this in the rift as I go along. However, you still can engage multiple elites if required and indeed because we still have the flavor of time from our emanating from our follower uh, especially when you get a power pylon or a conduit pylon uh, or even a shielding pylon uh, with this build you can take on those multiple elites and see if you can take them down the problem with multiple elites with this build i found is that your uh, is your uh, images start to take uh, too much damage from the affixes typically, so the pylons really are what's going to help you there. Notably, crowd control impairing effects reduction is going to be important. Uh, I advise two rolls at least, it will make you feel a lot better, and getting a higher range on those crowd control impairing effects rolls is very important as well. I'm just super excited to see this build in play. I uh, hope you are too. Please enjoy this version and have a good day.